Jesus, our Savior. Yes, summer is over and school's back in session. Isn't that wonderful? I guess it depends on your perspective. I heard a no. I heard a no. Okay. All right. No, but it is a blessing. It is a blessing. And like we were just just talking about with uh, the staff and the uh, teachers and aides and uh, staff of St. John's and and those in the community, that it is a blessing. And we are blessed here at St. John's to have all these dedicated servants uh, serving here at St. John's and, and in our community. Now, one of the things we do here at St. John's is every year for our school, there is a theme that the staff picks, a theme and an accompanying theme verse that we then focus in on throughout the year, some aspect of our walk with Christ, of being a Christian, that we really want to emphasize and, and hope to, to take to heart. And uh, it's something that then we, we talk about in the classroom, we emphasize in chapel services and I contribute a song, and there's um, artwork and graphics around the campus, all for the purpose of this becoming kind of our our culture this this year with a view to it just being taken to heart and becoming part of our life with Christ. Last year's theme was thankful hearts, and when we emphasize looking at all the gifts God has given us and responding with gratitude, having an attitude of gratitude for the gifts God has given. This year's theme kind of takes that to the next step. God has gifted us, gifted us abundantly when we are to respond with thanksgiving, but also, why do we have these gifts? Why are we so gifted? We are gifted to serve, and that's our theme this year, gifted to serve. And the theme verse is 1 Peter 4.10. Would you read that with me, please? Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. That's our theme, gifted to serve. On the one hand, it's a very simple theme, but on the other, it's a rather difficult theme. It's, it's simple in that it's a pretty simple concept. God has gifted us abundantly for which we give Him thanks with our thankful hearts. But that giftedness is not just for ourselves. It's not just about me enhancing my comfort and my lifestyle and my enjoyment. These gifts are that I may serve others. Gifted to serve others. Very simple. But it's also a difficult theme because in living this, we are pushing against being opposed by some of the natural inclinations of our fallen, self-centered, sinful hearts. It's the essence of the sinful nature, of the fallen taint on humanity is self-centeredness, self-pride, and self-worship. But also, it's, it's this theme, gifted to serve, is going against some pretty powerful values and trends in our culture at large. Let's take a look at that. It's all about, no, it's not about you, right? It's not about you. It's not about you. Those are the words that Rick Warren used to begin his mega best-selling The Purpose Driven Life about 17 years ago. About what, what am I here for? What's the purpose of my life? What's the meaning of life? And the first thing he wrote about is, it's, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not all about me. I'm not finding it just looking at myself. And he makes the point throughout the book that it's, it's, it's about God. It's about looking to the Lord. After all, it makes sense. He's the creator. He made us. Look at the owner's manual and find out why you're made. So it's not about you. Now, that was a relevant point 17 years ago. It's even more so today, even more so. If you look at some of the the words or some of the expressions that are used to describe the times we live in, the culture in which we're we're living, we live in an entitlement culture. You've heard that, right? Entitlement culture, that, that giftedness, things should come to me because they're owed me and I deserve them. Or... 
what's called the consumer culture, the consumerist culture, consumerism, that I've, my, my goal in life is to enhance my life by taking in things and experiences all to making my life more comfortable, more enjoyable, better standard of living. It's for me. There's a book that, uh, as a staff, we were, we were reading called Unselfie. Uh, highly recommend it, especially for parents um, and, and educators and grandparents. Uh, very good book about, you see the, the subtitle up there, Nine Essential Habits that Provide the Empathy Advantage, Teaching and Inculcating Empathy. And something the author points out, and this is rather up-to-date stuff, research on things going on in our culture, and it's pretty alarming. Um, the way she describes it is, in the way they're, they're, they're describing it based on the studies, is that we are living with an, an epidemic of narcissism in our culture. And what is narcissism? It is all about me. Aren't you glad to know me? And, and accompanying that is an alarming decline in empathy and the, the ability and even the willingness to look at somebody and see life through their shoes and try to understand their feelings so that I may have a meaningful relationship with them. An alarming decline. Instead, we're becoming very selfie culture. It's, you know, that question, going back to that question, what are, you know, what are we here for? What, what's, what's, what's life all about? What's my purpose? It, is there some, there's some powerful stuff in the values and trends in our culture that answers that question with, it is, after all, all about me. It's about me. It's about my happiness my personal fulfillment, that's my goal in life. That's what I'm striving for. And, and even, you know, I may serve, I may share, I may help out, but really I'm doing it in part because it makes me feel good. See, it's about me again. All about me. And that's why this theme we've picked gifted to serve is a difficult theme because it is swimming upstream against the inclinations of the stained sinful heart and also against some of the values in the culture. If the culture was going to be putting a theme out, it would be not gifted to serve, but gifted to enjoy, gifted to indulge, gifted for me because I deserve it. Gifted to serve is going the complete opposite direction. And we see gifted to serve in its truest form, its most beautiful image, in the one who is gifted with everything and used it all to serve. And that's Jesus Christ. Gifted to serve starts with a contemplation of the cross of Jesus. God himself, in the mystery of the Trinity, through whom all things are made, who owns all things, you can't get more gifted. He has it all, owns it all. And for fallen creation and restoring his fallen creation and fallen humanity, all of it to become a servant, to serve. Our gospel today from, from Matthew chapter 20, Jesus in dialogue with his disciples about the meaning of greatness and their little argument among themselves as to which one is going to be the greatest and fit the current cultural definitions of greatness. And Jesus called them together, it says, and he says, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Now, he's speaking against cultural trends of his day, cultural values of his day, which are a lot similar to ours. 
if he was saying this today, he might say, you know how, how like in our culture, to be considered great, it's, it's like pow- being powerful, having political power, or, or being like super wealthy, or an incredible athlete, or entertainer, or a beautiful model, or having like lots and lots of Twitter followers and tons of Instagram likes, that that's what it means to be great in our culture. It's true. That's what we consider great. And Jesus says, uh, not so with you. Not so with you. Welcome to my upside down kingdom. Not so with you. We have a different way of life. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. That's just low as you can go. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Gifted to serve is seen in the cross. Now, on the cross of Jesus, and what He just refers there to as life as a ransom for many. That's the center, the epicenter of our giftedness. And our most significant and eternal and profound gifts are there, one for us on the cross. Forgiveness, peace with God, reconciliation, eternal life, the resurrection, the new creation, all of that right there on the cross. This is where the gifts of God in their fullness for us. But also Jesus says there's something else going on there. He's holding it up as a picture, a model, a pattern. This is how the upside-down kingdom works. True greatness is in humbling ourselves to serve. And so the cross is a picture of gifted to serve. It's a picture of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. He's saying, hey, you want to be my follower? You want to be my follower? Take up your cross and serve, and serve. Greatness in the kingdom is serving. And then he showed that again at the Last Supper when they're gathered up in the upper room, and before their discussion begins, before the meal begins, there's the washing of feet. Now, this, this washing of feet, we can think about it as though you know, it's, it's a kind of a formality or a ritual that they go through, because sometimes we do that, you know, Monday, Thursday, wash feet. It is kind of a symbolic, you know, uh, ritual to, to engage in. But it was very practical, functional, what Jesus, what they were doing here. I mean, just imagine what it was like, if you can't imagine, you know, 2,000 years ago walking the streets of Jerusalem, unpaved, dirt, mud, garbage, people using corners for latrines, animals, animals, animals everywhere, okay? Walk around that city for several hours in open sandals or bare feet, as many of them would have been. What would your feet look like? What would be on them? Maybe you get used to it, I guess, but then when you come into a nice place, come into a nice meal, it's Passover meal. We're going to celebrate Passover. We've got a special room rented out. We need our feet washed. And and, and this would have been the, the role, the job of a slave or a lowly servant or a child. And while you're having your feet washed, you don't even make eye contact with the person because they're so far beneath you. It's a lowly, lowly job. And the mixed into that also is just some cultural things and taboos and values about feet. Feet, in some cultures, you know, know, there's a lot of negative thing about feet. Like in some cultures, you don't point your foot at somebody. That's an insult. Or show the bottom of your foot at point that at somebody. That is a profound insult. You might have seen it in in news clippings. Somebody to insult somebody takes off their shoe and throws it or hits them with it. It's about this feet thing. So there's all kinds of powerful stuff here. We've got dirty, dirty feet. And then Jesus, who's Lord of the feast, he's the rabbi. They are seeing that he is also son of God, Messiah. 
Jesus gets down and he washes the dirt and the mud and the garbage and the animal feces off of his disciples' feet. True greatness is lived out in service. He says this about it. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. It's not just about knowing. It's about doing. Now, it is a blessing to receive the gifts of God. For all of our blessings are receiving the gifts of God. Jesus is here speaking a blessing on using those gifts to serve others. To serve others. And that brings us back around to our theme. Gifted to serve. And what Peter wrote there in 1 Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. It's not about me. It's not about my comfort and lifestyle. It's not about that. And notice the word Peter uses there. Whatever. Whatever. That's inclusive. He's not just speaking about a spiritual gift. He's speaking about it all. Whatever gift you have received, your life, your health, your experience, your education, your home, your car, your possessions, your money, and your spiritual gifts and your calling as a child of God, Peter says all of it, all of it, all of it to serve What he's calling for is as a way of thinking about ourselves, the paradigm through which we view ourselves, our our self-identity, and it comes down to this. Jesus came to serve. I follow Jesus. Therefore, I serve. I am here to serve. It's not I'm here to consume. I'm here to enjoy. That may happen. In fact, the greatest enjoyment comes through serving. I am here to serve. And keeping these words in the right order is very important. It's gifted to serve, not serving so I'll be gifted. Now, the giftedness comes first. The giftedness is grace. It is a gift of God. And it's important for that to be understood as first because it's God's gifts to us that enable us to serve. It's this spiritual gifts to us that empower us and strengthen us to serve. His forgiveness, His grace, His Holy Spirit, His presence within us, His feeding us with His sacraments, His blessing us as we gather in His name in small groups and in worship. We need that because there the Lord gifts us with the strength, the empowerment, the ability to serve as He's called us. Gifted to serve. Now today we especially are we're celebrating those who've been gifted to serve in schools and education um, institutions in our community. And we're thankful for them. But this is for all of us. This is for all of us, each of us. In all of our relationships, in all of our doings, we are gifted to serve. In your home with your family, in your neighborhood with your neighbors amongst those you work with and volunteer with, the people that, that, that you, you see and work with here at church and the school, the people you interact with online, gifted to serve. So may God bless us all in His gifting us by His grace, also with this, this awareness and the strength and leadership of His Spirit that we may truly follow him in living out this phrase, gifted to serve. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have gifted us beyond our comprehension, so easy to take for granted. But Lord, we, we confess it's just too easy to think that it's about us and it's just all about making our life better. 
We thank you that it does make our life better. We praise you for the, the, for the gifts that, that, that contribute and enhance and bless our lives in so many ways, Lord. But, but lift our eyes away from ourselves. Lift our eyes away from ourselves to behold you and to give glory to you, but also to the needs and opportunities in our, around us. Make us a blessing, Lord, as we serve in our homes, in our workplaces, in our community, in our church, in our school. Equip us, Lord, to be gifted to serve. Amen.